That now to journalist Mandy Weiner, who has covered Basasa and state capture extensively. Mandy, good evening, and thank you for your time. So I'm going to take you back a couple of years, say about 14 years. You dealt with the Brett Kibble story um, and, and, and wrote about it and all of that. When you heard the news of Gavin Watson and the accident, what was your first thought? Look, I think there's inevitably going to be comparisons drawn between the two incidents. And that's because there are a lot of similarities in their stories. They're both these larger-than-life captains of industries, very colourful men who uh, were very loud and proud about the fact that they funded the ANC mm -hmm. and that were involved with allegations of corruption. Uh, both of their empires had come crashing down around them. Um, on, the, on the eve of uh, Brett Kevill's death, he was about to be charged for fraud. Uh, similarly, we know that Gavin Watson was being investigated. He was supposed to testify mm. at a tax inquiry mm. tomorrow. Uh, and then there's obviously a lot of questions around the incidents themselves. Uh, with Brett Kebble, he went to the underworld to fetch his killers and it emerged that it was this astonishing assisted suicide. Yeah. And now there's lots of questions, um, inevitably, about the death of uh, Gavin Watson as well. Okay, well, if we had to look at just, you know, uh, those similarities like you talk about. Also mention of uh, the likes of Mikey Schultz popped up also in the in Brett Kibble and, and in that t entire saga. Also speculation that he'd had some dealings with Gavin Watson as well. Just looking at things like that and then you have to wonder okay fine it comes down to fraud, it comes down to uh, alleged fraud, alleged corruption, whatever it was. It's just money at the end of the day. It's money, it's not like you're accused of murder, it's not like you're accused of all of these things. So surely, you know, if it was that case, this could have blown over in a couple of years. There are so many unsolved cases when it comes to corruption. I mean, this country is not known for getting down to the bottom of it. You have to wonder at what, what state, what would you have to be in at that point if it were? not an accident. So you have to look at the potential consequences yeah. for, for Gavin Watson here. And, and to be clear, there is no evidence at this stage to suggest that yeah. there was any foul play yeah. involved in, in Gavin Watson's death at all. But we know that his tax affairs were under scrutiny. Uh, we know that, uh, that Angelo Grizzi had spilled the beans at uh, the Zondo Commission into state capture. Um, and that th there may well have been criminal charges uh, coming for Gavin Watson. And that would have meant that his entire empire that he had built around him um, and the fact that he had perched himself as this influential businessman. Uh, he wasn't necessarily flashy. He operated out of Kruger store. Mm, but, you know, it mm. wasn't as though he was in, in Melrose, like, yeah. a, like a kibble. Um, so, so he would have lost all of that. You know, he may potentially have landed up in jail. Uh, so, so that could have been the consequence for him. But Although there's no evidence at this stage, people are going to speculate. They're going to look at the fact that, you know, were there any skid marks yeah. on the road? Um, was his body actually identified? I've seen people and speculating. And is it him if there was a body? He, I mean, we've gone as far as to ask that question. Is he sipping cocktails in the Cayman Islands yeah. with Kebble? Yeah. You know, there's always going to be that kind of speculation from people in the absence of any kind of firm evidence and any kind of transparent communication. I mean, of course, yes, it could always just have been. It was just an accident. But at that time of the morning, where he was going, where the car was found, we know Joburg traffic, okay, it kind of picks up after that. What could possibly have gone wrong? He was driving his usual car, apparently he had parked his BMW at uh, premises elsewhere and had this car temporarily. So all of that and the timing, like we talk so, about the timing of this. So we, ha we have to look at the facts. Yeah. And we, we're in the business of, of, of facts. Yeah. And what we know is that he had left his BMW X5 at the Bosasa headquarters in Krugersdorp. He had called a prayer meeting there mm -hmm. yesterday yes, morning, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't completely unusual yeah. for him. We, he's, he's known to have called prayer meetings like that before. And then he checked out uh, Toyota Corolla to use for the weekend because his car had mechanical problems. Uh, the one question is the fact that he booked out a manual car and apparently he only drives automatic, mm. so he doesn't know how to drive a, a manual car. Mm. We we know that the accident occurred at five past five this morning. Uh, we know where it occurred and that um, the, the police are investigating a case of culpable homicide and that he was taken to the Germiston mortuary. But beyond that, we don't know too much else. We don't yeah. know if a flight was booked. We don't know um, any of the other circumstances. And that's going to be up to the investigators yeah. now to look at all of that. You know, what was the weight of the car? What was the speed yeah. of impact? What was the point of impact? Was he flying to somewhere, coming back from somewhere? That would also give us a clue as to what he was doing on that end of the world. And I suppose, unlike Brett Kebble, where we had a shooting, the question was, who did this? Or who was responsible mm. for this? Here, it could just be that it was. Well, that's right. So with the Kebble incident, we had uh, hitmen and there were three of them. Uh, we had people who uh, had seen him just before what had occurred. Here, there is only Gavin Watson. And yeah. it's only his 
version. You know, he's the only person that yeah, could possibly yeah. give a and version. And what you see with your eyes. Even, yeah, that's it, yeah. even with the cable murder, and to today, we still don't know if the version told in court by Mikey Schultz and his two accomplices was indeed the truth. There's always going to be a view that there are multiple truths and multiple versions. And I suppose at the end of the day, Mandy, the question we have to ask is who has the most to gain from Gavin Watson not being here anymore? to answer any questions about anything. And, and that's where the speculation comes in. People saying that he was potentially going to implicate people, that he was going to bring uh, influential people down potentially, or if it was a suicide that he was trying to save himself from the shame and mm. uh, possible mm. jail time. Uh, but at this stage, on the evidence that we have, it was an accident. It was an accident for now. Okay, until we know further and the likes of other reporters and Mandy Wiener as well, they will dig till we get to those answers, I'm sure. Thank you very much, uh, Mandy Wiener, for your time and the